All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to James Way's webinar Wednesdays. I'm Victoria Frail. I'm the training and documentation manager here at James Way. Um, and I'm joined this week by Lynette Price. Lynette is one of our uh, technical consulting technical advisors. You've probably seen him or had him visit your hatchery in the past. Um, he has over 20 years of experience uh, here at James Way, and before that, he came to us from a career in hatcheries and breeders in turkeys, ducks, and chickens. So we welcome your extensive knowledge. Today. Glad to be here. We have a bit of a small group um, this week, probably due to our topic being uh, focus on ducks, um, which is great. I think I do see a couple new names, so welcome uh, to our webinar series. In the top left corner of your screen, you're going to have your operational panel. In there, the most important button really is the Q&A button. You can use that to send questions directly to Lynnet and I'll, I. They will show up right here <coughs> on the computer. Um, you can also raise your hand. You can chat with the other participants or directly with us, the panelists, and also our moderator, Krista. Um, and then also you have an audio video option um, thing there you can use to set up if your audio isn't great right now. Um, so that being said, I want to go ahead and show everyone a little news story I saw a couple weeks ago. So check out this mama duck. Now she's not actually a duck as most of you would know. She's actually a merganser. But um, she was spotted uh, by this photographer, uh, Brent Sizek, in Minnesota. Um, and he saw her first with about 50 ducklings following her. And then a couple days later while he was shooting, he um, got this photo. And just counting the heads, um, he has 76 ducklings following this mama duck. Uh, so, Lynnett, what do you have to say about that? Well, that's really called a true mother. In other words, if she can create that much tension to all or the quantity of uh, ducklings she has behind her. Now, we know that all these ducklings aren't actually hers. She's probably basically babysitting them um, for other mama ducks. But it does go in line with what, uh, what Lynnett says and Jerry says, um, that the mama knows best, right? And it, here... At James Way and through incubation, we're really looking to emulate what Mama Duck is doing. And that's what we're really trying to do, or what we can, James Way can, is emulate of, the, of what Mother does in the incubation process. And we try to mimic Mother. In other words, the, the eggs are telling <clears throat> the, the machine what to do. It's not vice versa like a multi-stage. It, it all goes in together with the eggs are telling the machine what to do by carbon dioxide and other other exactly. principles that uh, we have at James Way. So if anyone would like to take a look at this news story, um, I will put it up on our James Way Incubators Company uh, Facebook page, um, a link to one of the stories that, that was featured on <clears> the <throat> deck, and you can see some other pictures. Uh, she actually traveled up to Canada a couple days later, um, and there are some more shots of her and her babies there. So, Lynette, um, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Uh, tell us about ducks. What makes ducks different or special um, compared to chicken incubation? Okay, well, th with, first of all, in other words, uh, Pekin breed uh, is 28 days, and then you have Muscovies that are basically 35. And that is, a say, a cross between a, <coughs> a Pekin and a, uh, a goose, which uh, has much lighter meat than, say, a Pekin duck. And it's not quite has the oil content uh, as, say, in a Pekin bird. Right. And the bird itself, in other words, you one thing that's really kind of unique about a duckling, or I'll refer to as a Pekin duck, is that the cuticle on the egg is much thicker than what is on, say, a chicken egg or turkey egg. Chicken, you have less cuticle turkey, but the, the, the or ducks uh, have a much thicker cuticle on that. And that's from the birds over the years, whether and from breeding, from from uh, a wildlife mallards to all the way to uh, to other birds. And that that is the reason why originally you had, say, birds. Of course, you think about ducklings around a lake or around a river. 
So that's the reason that cuticle is a little thicker. Right. But um, it, but incubation wise, there are some differences uh, between chicken and duckling. Of uh, again, I refer back to the cuticle. The cuticle is like if you say have the egg and you would take your fingernail, fingernail, excuse me, and then scratch over the surface of the egg. What you have is it feels like a say a wax or or very slick. Okay. And <clears throat> again, that's the protection of the egg itself. And so with both, say there's different methods with that to about incubating the eggs themselves. Okay. So does this cuticle, do we, we need to break this down to, well, to help the duckling get out? Is that sort of? That's basically it. And now there's say one method, in other words, with cuticle on, for example, you could run your temperatures basically the same, but your, <clears throat> excuse me, the relative humidity has to be lower. Okay. And then plus you also have to have, with the higher CO2 or carbon dioxide, you have to have, say, that uh, high, say, 9,000. And even I don't really get alarmed if it goes to 10, but we have that damper set up with the CO2 where it will let in uh, air and open up that damper and then whenever it gets to say 9,000 or below 9,000 then the damper will close back up. Right. But again that's kind of mimicking a uh, mother because she will do that as and she knows of say getting up off of her nest. Right. And when she gets off her nest then she would bring back say water from her feathers and she would sit back on the eggs. But again, with uh, cuticle on, it's, it's mainly the relative humidity that uh, has to be lower versus higher. Right. With cuticle off. Now, you can remove that cuticle, and this is basically in, with principles of different operations do different procedures. But cuticle off is, as I've said earlier, it's like a waxy right. right over the top of the egg or the whole surface for the egg. Now you can remove that cuticle, and then if you would say scratch that surface of that egg, it's going to feel more like a chalkboard. Right, more okay. like a regular egg, or closer. Closer, yes. Yeah. Again, all three species have that cuticle, but uh, by but with the carbon dioxide being higher, it deteriorates that along with, say, it a little bit gradually more so than say with cuticle off. Right. So if we are setting our eggs into our incubator with cuticle off, how are we getting that cuticle off? Is that a washing process? Yes. Um, there's different methods of removing the cuticle. Now, what you can do is, <clears throat> is to remove that cuticle, you really need a, a um, water solution with about 12 to 1,300 parts per million uh, <clears throat> of chlorine and say 5%. And after that, say that 5%, it's just like it can be removed, say, for example, with a tray washer. That's one method. But again, you try to keep that uh, uh, concentration of about 12 to 1,300 parts per million. Right. Now, it can be done with agitation and like putting the eggs in a vat and you have agitation or yeah. circulation. Now, one way you can definitely tell if you've removed the cuticle completely is you, after, say, if you took a sample out of one egg, and then you can take, say, a bowl or a cup, but covering the whole surface of the egg and putting whatever color, red, blue, green, whatever, and putting that egg in there and let it sit for a minute, maybe a minute and a half, and then you can pull the, remove the egg and then you break open the egg. Right. And you should have a very close density of a pattern. It's kind of like, a, say, a shotgun, they're like a pellets, but right. that will be continuously throughout the whole egg, and you can tell if you're removing it completely or thoroughly. Right. So what is the... Um What's the positives of pre-removal and what are the negatives of removing the cuticle in advance? Like are, 
for one, you, you know, we're washing or, or putting them in water. So do we have the possibility of, you know, introducing extra bacteria? Is that a concern with cuticle removal? With cuticle removal and when you completely remove the cuticle, that is a very, very critical because you cannot get those eggs wet because your pores and everything are totally open because you have removed that cuticle. So you cannot get any type of, say, water on those eggs during the incubation. Right. And if you do, you can get some very bad, very bad uh, bacteria and especially exploders after the bird or during the incubation process. Right. Um, so then if I'm incubating, there are two different profiles that we would recommend, one for a cuticle off, one for a cuticle on? Basically, yes. Yeah. I mean, it would be, say again, slightly different, but you would have your relative humidity in your machine on the profile with cuticle off at a much higher rate because, again, your, your pores are completely open from the beginning of uh, incubation all the way to the end. So if you if it's, say, too low, you can really, say, dehydrate the duckling as it develops. Right. So along with that, what is our moisture loss target on a duck egg in platinum, and is there a different target in multi-stage? Okay, for, for multi-stage, you're looking at a, a rate of around 12%. Right. Sometimes 13. Okay. But in other words, over the years, and even with all the, say, experiments that I've experienced, you're really not going to lose uh, but of around 10% at 25 days incubation for a peaking. Right. Now, again, Muscovies, they are like 35 days incubation. So that's still, you would incubate them the same way, but you would have a longer duration of your profile. Right, right. Um... So the high carbon dioxide, you said we're looking for sort of 9,000 ppm. Uh, from what day and for how many days are we, are we looking for that? And is that different depending whether we have the cuticle on or the cuticle off? The carbon dioxide level, not necessarily because see what also, see that bird is, uh, the shell and everything is made out of uh, <clears throat> uh, calcium and lime. And that's what's, say, the main components of the eggshell. So that helps deteriorate. In other words, let's say cuticle on. That helps deteriorate that eggshell. And again, lower uh, relative humidity. Right. And what the, let's just say that they, uh, with the cuticle on, that deterioration of the high CO2 deteriorates. It goes back into the bone structure, and then you have... In other words, your your uh, uh, cardiovascular of the bird, and with all, and then also with the uh, um, uh, well, not the cardiovascular, but also, in other words, that makes the say bird have a better system itself. Right. Safe. Right. Yeah, a stronger system. Stronger, stronger system. But again, <laughs> we found that the bone structure of the bird is usually bigger. And usually, in gram wise, uh, the birds would weigh about three grams heavier than, say, one without. Right. Now, the, you in multi stage, you still you get that same process, but it's still not because you don't have like Mama does. In other yeah. words, you don't have all the eggs. In other words, say a clutch of nine or a clutch of ten. In other words, you don't have all of those eggs started with incubation at the same time. Exactly, exactly. But again, the, the carbon dioxide is, and plus that is not injected. I mean, we don't, James Way does not <coughs> have to inject CO2 because the tightness of our cabinet. Exactly, I right. Mean, because there's so many that another, I mean, with ducks, and there are so many that inject it, but it's still, it's not the same as what mother has done. And again, we, again, I go back, we mimic mother. Right. And so with the, now you ask about uh, when it, say, gets to 9,000. We will have some that will be at 9,000 in, say, nine days right. incubation, or even eight days, 
depending on your fertility. So, but then again, that damper, if it goes say 9,300, then that damper will start cracking open, letting right. in fresh air. And then it, say below your, say your mark of 9,000, say 8,700, then that damper will close back up right. and then it will rebuild. Mm -hmm. And so, so for how many days does it, would you operate like that for the profile? Is that one day? Like, cause in chickens, we sort of go to 10,000 for one day and then start to open. So are we holding there a little longer in well, ducks? Not necessarily, but I would say 9,000. In other words, and then say as your development, um, what your development, and then you will drop that down to say 6,000 or 5,000, okay. depending on the bird and the breed. And again, uh, if cuticle is on or off. Right. Um, we have a question from James. He wants to know, um, is chlorine the best solution for cuticle removal or is something like hydrogen peroxide an option? Are there other prob options? The only one that I'm aware of is, is not with carbon, or excuse me, hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide. Yes. I have really, I have no experience with hydrogen peroxide okay. and what it does. It's just mainly been with, uh, as I was saying, the 1,300, 1,200 parts per million uh, of chlorine at a right. 5% solution. Right. Okay. But hydrogen peroxide, that would be, I don't know. I, in short, I, I really don't know of the effects. Okay. Um, so what about eggshell temperature? Um, if we were controlling on eggshell temperature or if we were just going through and checking our eggshell temperature with a um, like heat gun, whatever, well, yeah. um, are we looking for still that sort of 101 or are we looking for a warmer temperature, cooler temperature? Basically, you don't really want it to uh, say above 101. Right. That's whenever you start getting above that, it's really becomes starting to be a danger zone. Okay. So about the same then. Yes. So what about, I remember um, a long time ago when I sort of started here, I had heard about a hatchery and I think they had geese, not ducks, but they were actually pulling their racks out and wetting down their eggs once a day or on a cer certain frequency. Is that something, I mean, it kind of sounds like it mimics mama since she's going to go out, swim around and com come back and probably is wet, but... Is that something that is commonly done, that should be done, shouldn't be done? Well, um, we, have, we have a customer in California, and he was doing that. And this goes back to, oh, I think, 2007, I think. But in other words, he was doing that with duck eggs and then also with geese eggs. And I've convinced him to close up the damper like we do with our profiles. And in short, uh, well, actually, <clears throat> he, he, wasn't, and, uh, he wasn't pulling the eggs out. And this was a platinum. He, we, or James Way made a spray system. Okay. In other words, that would, yep. would uh, spray the eggs in interval, <coughs> depending on what stage of incubation. But uh, Mr. Metzer, I've, I've, we talked back and forth. And he uses the damper clothes, the high CO2. And he wrote an article a while back about this. And, but he, he doesn't spray eggs any longer. Okay. He uses the method with the high CO2. Okay. Interesting. Um, if anyone hasn't seen that article, um, I'm sure we could probably dig it up and send it to you. So just uh, let us know, webinars at jamesway.com, or of course, email Lynn directly, and I'm sure we can help you out. Yes, I, uh, I, I can find that on my computer somewhere. So what about turning? Is there any difference in how we are turning? Are we turning more frequently, less frequently? You can still basically turn uh, each hour, and normally we stop turning at 22 days. Okay. Incubation. Uh, some 21, but still at 22 days. But now with that, if you turn them all the way through 25 days, that's it's not going to hurt whatsoever. And actually there is uh, uh, one 
customer that after say 21, 22 days, he turns the eggs every 30 minutes. Okay. And what that does is it transfers the heat back and forth. And then that's whenever that, uh, especially the 30%, in other words, platinums would be uh, 70% water cool, right. 30% air cool. Right. And that's with your relative humidity around 45, 50%. And, but it, it will keep the machine cooler by doing that. And then it doesn't uh, uh, cool as much with your percentage of cooling. It will cut that rate down. Right. But still once an hour. Uh, with any of the avian species is you won't hurt yourself if you make sure that the eggs turn every three, but still every hour is the best. Right. Right. And that, yeah, that's sort of industry standard. Um, what about fumigation? Um, I've sort of heard read, um, we had ducks as a kid, you know, ducks are dirtier, um, is there any benefit to fumigating uh, during incubation um, that you see, or is that sort of more of a Band-Aid for sanitation issues or? Band-Aid. Band-Aid. <laughs> Band <That's laughs> I'll just say, it's a Band-Aid. Yeah. And it's, it's mainly if, if you have eggs that are, say, clean, and, or even if you don't remove the cuticle, but you just uh, clean that bacteria off before you set it into yeah. the machine. And again, that it's not going to, the pores aren't open at that stage. So if they're not open and then you're not letting in bacteria. Right. But still setting the eggs, they, if storage room 65, 68 in that range. Right. So kind of along with that, um, because we don't want obviously exploders, anything like that, is candling at transfer uh, more important for ducks or just as important? It's just as important. In other words, and I'll just at 25 days, you really, you're not disturbing the embryo whatsoever. And, and at that stage, again, going back, you don't have to turn the egg, but uh, at 25 days, candling, I, I think is perfectly fine. Okay. Um, I have a question here from Ronald. He's asking, um, what benefits are there to using an SST turkey flat for ducks, turkeys, or geese, really? Well, if the, the SST flat, in other words, you can place uh, bigger eggs into that flat because it has a slightly larger cut. Now, with geese, in other words, depending on the gram size of the egg, it will not. It may not. It fit. will not. No, it, it will not. And then again, it goes back. The only flat you can really use is a 25 egg flat. That's going to hold geese eggs, but that's all depends because I've uh, heard of some 115, 120 gram eggs. They will not fit. <laughs> that, that seems like a pretty big egg. That's a big egg. Um. So. Now I've hatched my lovely little ducklings. Um, is there any special ventilation concerns that I have in my uh, in my duckling room uh, when we're processing, when we're boxing? No, not necessarily. It's in other words, with what's in the James Way design manual, it will uh, uh, handle, say, the BTUs being produced from the ducklings. Right, exactly. Um, and from my experience in HVAC, uh, Basically, you're just using a different fresh air requirement um, for the ducklings because just like the turkeys, they are larger. Um, they're going to require more oxygen uh, per bird than a chicken, obviously. So as long as you're using a turkey or duckling respiration number instead of uh, the chicken number, you should yes. be fine. Yes, you'll be fine. Um, so along with that, is there anything special that we need to do with our ducklings um, in terms of care? Uh, compared to chickens? Well, I would say more so with turkeys, but uh, when you say care, Victoria, you're talking about at the hatchery, at the house, or? Yeah, let, let's say all, all the way through. Not necessarily because actually ducklings or ducks are really pretty vibrant. I mean, pretty resistant. Yeah. Versus, say, 
diseases or bacteria that might affect a turkey or a chicken. Um, they're pretty resilient. Are we vaccinating ducks? Is that something common no, or no? No, that's not common. No. <laughs> Uh, the only thing now, some some customers may, but for example, whenever the ducklings hatch, at the very end of their beak, you have a slight, just it looks like yeah. a little, little say, uh, like a can opener. Yeah. And that's how they get in. That's the, like the out. egg tooth type thing. Egg tooth thing. Yeah. Now, some uh, companies will say just singe that after hatch but that helps with the quality later on down okay. the, as the bird grows. And really the companies get a better quality of duck because they're, I mean, ducks are going to say peck each Bug other. Bug each other. Yeah. 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 And, but it just, uh, it doesn't do any harm to the bird. Right. Do we brood ducks? No, we brood. Brood. Uh, you know, we use that term brooding a lot in, in chickens, is that the same sort of, are we doing the same sort of processes when we set them in the houses? Basically, yes. 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 Um, so I've heard something about their eyes, that their eyes need to be cleaned. Why is that? Well, I'll just say most, I mean, most of the systems, say worldwide, you have uh, what you call nipple drinkers. Right. Now the eyes, this is more so with say breeders, because with you, what you have is, that eye is very sensitive with a duckling. And as, especially with breeders, you can, if they're, if they're not able to say wash their eyes or keep their eyes washed, you get some eye infection. Right, dunking and, their head in the water. and Yes, now in other words, whenever we had breeders, uh, myself, in other words, we had, and I'm not, can, you know, I'm not saying you gotta go out here and do this, but with, we didn't have that much, say, eye infection. We had some, but in other words, the type of waters was like a, a three inch pan water system about 24 inches wide, and it was like a bird cake. But they were able to dip down and keep their eyes clean. And then down below, these were on the side of the houses, and you had, uh, say, a hole so big about, so eight inches or so out the side wall. And then you had a platform uh, built from two inch by six inch. And then you had welded wire. All right, whenever they were making their mess and everything else, you didn't make a mess of the house because all that, say water, they were splashing around yeah. and they're getting their head under there. It just went straight out the house. That's smart. Well, that's... Because <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, had ducks quite a bit as kids and they were well, they, they, disasters they, sometimes. <laughs> but they are bred from the water. <laughs> In other words, um, water fowl. James is asking about uh, what should his hatch window be? Uh, first duck out to last duck out? Hatch window, oh, would, you would like to have them still around 24 hours, 25 hours. Right. Whenever you start getting to 36 hours, that's you really start harming your quality. The, the first out are, yes. are going to be They're going to be hurting. Yes. Now, along with that, um, we had Dr. Bramwell here a while ago talking about <coughs> uh, early feeding and um, that really because a chicken is a, I think the word was precocial bird, mm -hmm. that... Um, that it doesn't make sense because they all hatch out in the nest and then mama takes them out to find food. Mm -hmm. Their ducks are the same way. So we can say that because early feeding isn't really a benefit in chickens, it's also not a benefit in ducks. Would you mm -hmm. agree? Yes, I would totally agree because if your incubation is correct, you don't have to do that. Right. In other words, because of like James was just saying about 24 hour window, and then you can feel the differences in the 24 hour window ducks when they hatch and then versus 36 or longer. Right. If it's 36, it's entirely, entirely too long. Okay. Uh, James also asked, what should the vent temperatures be on a day old duckling? You'd, you don't really want to, you would like to have them around 100, say 0.3 or you can go say as, say as high as, uh, 
you don't want to see temperatures going up to over 101 on vent temperatures. Right. Okay. <coughs> um, so what I really want to know, though, is okay. tell me about um, one of your biggest duckling hatching disaster stories and what happened and what went wrong. What can we learn from that? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I didn't tell him I was going to ask that. Um, well, I'll just say the the pressure sensor switches. Whoever installed the machines, in short, they they were not set properly, and they were getting turn failures. Oh. And then whenever it was saying yes, his turn. If they had a failure, they never knew. Right. And that would be the biggest. And how bad was it? We won't talk about it. Oh, dear. That bad. But now, on a uh, personal aspect, we had Robin's incubators. And in short, uh, Robin's incubators, and the way they were called I-40s, and they were three compartments. Each compartment held 9,700 eggs. And you had a switch on the side. And short version is that switch missed the, the little clip or little plate. Right. And they turned completely, did a one, a one or a three. Three, si uh, uh, oh dear. A three dumped six. Them, yes. Dumped them upside down? Upside down. Good. That was, but that was just the worst personal one I've been through. <laughs> that yeah, that would not be. That was not a good day. No. Uh, Deb is asking, what day of incubation do you feel is the most ideal transfer for the Pekin ducks? I would still say at uh, twenty-five days, but you can, even if you would want to, because of say with your labor force. If you wanted to transfer at 24 days incubation, you will not uh, hurt yourself. And plus the profile that's already in the hatcher, in other words, it will adapt to even if it's earlier. Right. Even if it was 23 days. Let's just say you, because on your um, profile, it always starts at zero. Right. On your profile. So with that at zero, if it's at 23 days, it's going to run that away until it gets to 24 days or even 25 days. Right. And that still, that can be set up just like, but you always, just always remember you put your start day of incubation once from day one in that and it will take over and it, from it that. And it takes over there, right? Yes. And that's, that's the key is to make sure yes. that the start date on your hatcher is the day that you set the eggs. That's correct. Because that allows the hatchers to sort of pick up the profile and, and do what it needs to do as you're yes. going through. Yes. Um, another one from Deb, she's asking, do you think that the hatch window tends to be a little longer for ducks? Uh, I, I really don't think so. Uh, I, with ducks versus a, uh, turkeys I really see that it's like say you don't want to go over that 36 hours right right and could we use um, from the very first webinar uh, back in September of last year Philip went over um, sort of seeing your hatch window in hatch calm um, and and determining it that way um, and ways to sort of help can we use the same sort of techniques you can With use, ducks, use humidity peak to see what's going on. Yes, yes. That really is the same. And Hatchcom can be a very good, valuable tool, a tool sure. to, uh, to determine that. Now, I'm running um, multi-stage, James Wayne multi-stage uh, turkey, duck, goose incubators. Um, in our single-stage we talk about leveling positions after a certain point. Should we be doing that in our turkey, duck, and goose incubator? 
You talking about level? Should we, yeah, should we level our fourth position in, in the multi-stage? No. Uh, the reason I say that, is, and that's multi-stage machines. And if these machines, in other words, your space savers are basically uh, 18 feet, some odd inches long, and then your standard, uh, say, incubator multi-stage would be uh, around 21 feet. Right. So, in other words, the reason you don't want to level is this. Because with the pressure differentials and with your air moving at the proper speed to transfer the heat from the oldest eggs back to the youngest eggs. Right. And like I say, dissipating that heat. With pressure differentials, that, and this goes back two or three years ago when I first started looking at or testing that, is you don't... Uh, you want that 60 40 ratio right. is so important, so important. <coughs> and that's the reason uh, with four trolleys in the machine, do not level any of them. You don't need to level the eggs, whether you have big J capacity of a 25 egg flat or a 30 egg flat, super J. Right. It, it, it will totally just totally disturb the 60 but, 40 ratio. Yeah, the pressure difference. And also, with, uh, now, I don't know where the lady is calling from. Or, um, yeah, I'm not sure off the top of my head. And anyway, you uh, with with the fan blades that we offer, with the big J capacity, in other words, you're spacing from the uh, motor mount, and the motor mount is the four that are, uh, that are uh, bracketed up on the Venturi. Right. The inside. Right. The spacing for a 27 degree blade is one inch. Right. Now, with a Super J, well, a 38 flat, that is a, a one quarter of an inch to get that pressure differential. Okay. Okay. So, super, super important, um, just like on our chicken multi stage, that you have that 60 40 and your yes. fan blades are spaced correctly, um, yes. which will get you there. Yes. Uh, Leo is asking, um, would it be safe to candle at nine days? Preferably, you can you miss, say, just by mistake, and it all depends on the personnel you have, if they're experienced or not. But also, there's many times where at nine days, ten days, you can't really tell if it's fertile or not fertile. Okay. Now, if anything, I would suggest is waiting till 14 days. Okay. And then you can definitely, you know, if it's fertile or infertile. Yeah. The, so the further, the further, further along you are, the easier it's going to be. Further, further development, and then plus uh, the arrow factor has gone down. Of right. Being right. Fertile or not fertile. Right. Um, did you? Let's see. Do different parts of the world incubate ducklings differently? Do you see different practices? Um, in Australia, I know we, we have a lot of uh, platinums in Australia with ducks, um, or maybe in China. Well, with the, with the platinums, um, not necessarily, I don't. I mean, they basically go by the, say, the same principles, but of the, using the higher CO2. Right. Uh, they may turn different, some turn complete 25 days, some do not, but uh, it's been a long period of time since I've seen anyone that uh, say wet sex during right, incubation. Right. So if I'm going out to buy a incubator hatcher uh, machines to incubate some duck eggs, um, what would you say the most important factors are? Definitely CO two. We've we've talked about that. What what else is key? What other what other things would be on Linnet's uh, wish list for Santa to deliver? Well, I mean, the thing about it is with the machines, which we do have that capability, and it's just like over the years, what I found out that you do not have to run your fans at 100%. Right. Now, for example, if you had, say, your fans at the beginning of the cycle or the first 24 hours, you would set your fan speed at, say, 90%, 100%. And then depending on what size of cabinet, 
then you would drop that fan speed, um, say that, for example, in a uh, capacity of, say, uh, 25,000 or a P40, P60, 30,000. And your fan speeds can be, say, at, well, I've even set them at 55 or 60. Right. Now, what that does is it helps, <coughs> in other words, helps build the CO2 because the CO2 is a heavier gas. So if your fan speed is not uh, fast, then see you're, say, covering that whole surface or shell of that egg. So it it has more of an effect of, of, say, really helping to deteriorate the eggshell. Okay. And then you just basically, um, say, gradually bring it up. But I'll just say most of the ones that uh, we set up we don't even get to 100%, even at, hmm. say, towards, uh, say, 20 days or 21 days. We don't even get to, uh, to that. Right. And there's also even, say, some chicken machines that that are 120,000, and we don't have those at 100%. That's true, yeah. But I'm still working on that. Well, not working on it because it, it does work. Yeah. But... Uh, 100%, it, it really doesn't have, uh, for example, like 100%, your air is kind of like this, it's kind of an illustration, and then, for example, it doesn't have time to dissipate the heat from the oldest, or, or the eggs themselves, and, and because it's going through there too fast, whenever the fan speed slows down, uh, then... In other words, it's more like this, and it dissipates the heat right. away from the eggshell. Right. Um, oh, dear. I just lost. I had a really good question, and I just lost it. Well, it'll come back. It'll come back. Yeah, it'll My come back. goodness. Um, is there anything else on that wish list? So fan speed. Fan speed, and then carbon the, dioxide. Building the carbon dioxide. Uh, not injecting it. Not injecting. Building it naturally. One thing is, uh, just when you mention that, with uh, if your room conditions aren't say totally where you want them to be. Right. Uh, the best really way to compensate that is running uh, the damper on auto damper and well in other words you have uh, say a profile at a certain percentage but still putting it on auto damper right and because that will help open that damper and force that moisture out right and then if you're holding say for say a period of time you would want at the beginning of your profile or excuse me while in the holding mode you want to set your damper at like one percent and see it will activate in other words, if the humidity is higher, then the damper is going to open right. up. And then whenever it gets back down to the set point, it'll go back, say, to one. So you, you, that's really the best way. But uh, especially more so at the beginning, it, it's harder to get that moisture out. And that's the reason. But if you, if you can't run off CO2, then you really need to run with auto damper and uh, – percentage damper, but have the auto damper activated. Right. So I remembered my question, which is good. Um, transfer patterns. Um, in our operations manual, uh, chicken, we have some fairly detailed information about where the oldest flock should be set, where the youngest flock should be set, um, and then where you're transferring your racks to which positions and which hatchers. Um, is that still a concern, do the same rules apply for ducks, geese, and turkeys? That still applies. That still applies. Oldest eggs are always to the outside because yeah. they're bigger. Right. And then the more, uh, say, fertile flocks are closest to the ECU. Right. Now, uh, the only, say, duck machines that I'm aware of, the, the largest, uh, no, wait a minute. I was going to say P60. Pardon me. In China, at a customer, we have P80. We do, yeah. And which holds, well, you might as well say 50,000 eggs. Yeah. 
but the same principles hold. I mean, okay. transfer patterns and everything else. Okay. And for those of you who are um, duck people, maybe have never looked at our um, larger size cabinets, which are mostly used in chicken, the P80 is the width of a P40, and it's just two ECUs deep. So it actually has two ECUs. Um, and then, of course, our P120 is a double P60. Um, deeper machine. Um, um, yeah, the 60 would be half the size of, <laughs> say, a P120 chicken. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But that the P80 performed well in China. It did. And yes. Mm. So but, now it's time for Lynette's funny incubation story. Not. Uh, I don't have any of those. You don't have any of those. Not not funny. In other no. words, <laughs> no. It's never it, funny. <laughs> no, I'm just. It's. I don't know. It's. It's whenever you you're dealing with life and in other words you don't want <laughs> disasters business. yeah mm -hmm. no i wouldn't say i have any funny all right sorry <laughs> um what about breeders we know that you have some experience with breeders uh what kind of tips do you have um for our viewers that they could take back to the people managing their breeders or maybe we do have some breeder managers on here i'm not sure well one one tip was, and this was many years ago, and what I found out, and this was more so an accident because in the, say, the early 80s or mid-80s, say, construction of housing and everything was down. So you didn't, you had hard time uh, obtaining shavings, wood shavings. Right. So what I did uh, was, and we had in a storage building, Fescue, not straw or anything, fescue hay. Okay. And the hay itself kept the eggs cleaner. In the nesting box. In the nesting box. And uh, they did not, what I noticed too, they did not uh, say uh, uh, crap in the, in the nest. They, they would not. But with shavings, they would. Hmm. But then also, in other words, in the wintertime where we were located, in the wintertime, you could always tell it was uh, colder because you would look at a nest and you wouldn't see an egg. They would, you would take your hand and you'd pull out seven or eight eggs. Yeah. Because the colder it got, I mean, the more that they would try to protect them. Right. Try to bury them down. But fescue hay have worked real well. That is, that's interesting. And neat that you sort of found that out on a. That was just by accident. On an uh, accident. In other words, because it didn't have, or couldn't obtain shavings. Um, so a question on that. Um, how do you know if a female is not producing eggs? That's from Chris. Thanks, Chris. If the female is not uh, producing eggs, she is all nice and pretty. No feathers she plucked. She hasn't plucked her feathers. No, no, no not, not right. she. He. he. Oh. Because that kind of tells you how many times she has been breeding. Right. So uh, that basically tells me that uh, she is uh, costing me money. She's eating feed. She's eating feed. And, and she's not, not producing any no, eggs. And especially if you're paid per egg and then per duckling. Mm -hmm. She didn't. She's not. Time for the soup pot. Well, it was. <laughs> I, I would go through every so often and, and look through the birds or look through the houses and see which females were producing eggs and which ones were not. And which ones were dinner. And then that was, sorry, but that, <laughs> that was... Poor lady. <laughs> <laughs> Looks all pretty. Now your dinner. Well, on that note, okay. um, if anyone has any more questions, we are nearing our time commitment here. Um, if you want to drop them in the box, um, and I will ask Lynette to cover those for you. Um, I do want to thank everyone for tuning in. Yes. Um, thank you very much. Next month is going to be kind of interesting. Um, I am not going to be the host next month. I'm going to be the guest. Uh, Dr. Bramwell is going to be here, and he's going to be hosting um, 
the webinar and he's going to be grilling me, I guess, on uh, HVAC um, and my experiences in HVAC and the um, recommendations and considerations that everyone should take uh, for their hatcheries. Um, so that's going to be interesting. I can't lie. I'm already a little bit scared about that. Um, so do, as always, send in any questions in advance to webinars at jamesway.com. Any ideas, anything you would like Lynette to talk about next time. Lynette to talk about next time. Lynette to talk about <laughs> We can book him in <laughs> right again for October's if, if you all want him to. Um, just let us know if there's something specific you'd like him or anyone else to cover or if you'd like to hear from someone else um, here at James Way on a specific topic and we will get that covered for you. Uh, so since there are no more questions, um, thank you so much everyone. I hope you all have a great day.